Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In this lecture, lecture 30, we're gonna start our fifth unit in this lecture series, uh, unit five, which we'll call algebraic functions. So this will encompass other algebraic functions that we haven't yet talked about. We've done a lot about polynomials like linear quadratics and polynomials in general. In unit five here, we're going to focus primarily on the idea of a rational function, uh, but also near the end of this unit, we'll talk about radical functions like square roots, cube roots, and such. But for rational functions, we define a rational function to be a ratio between polynomials. So if P and Q are both polynomial functions, a rational function, which is where it gets its name as ratio, is going to be the, the quotient of two polynomial functions. As such, a lot of the properties we've learned in the previous unit number four about polynomials will apply in this situation, but we have to also be concerned uh, because of the division that comes into play. Polynomial division will be a big deal here. Uh, this affects the domain of a rational function. The domain of a rational function will be all those points that make the denominator not equal to zero. Um, with the polynomial functions we've studied so far, there was no restriction on domains, so we have to worry about what makes the denominator go to zero. Now, it turns out there's two things that happen uh, to a function as the denominator goes to zero, a rational function. One option is going to be something like the following. We get something called a removed point. So it looks like just a polynomial curve, but then when no one was looking, Bilbo Baggins stole the ring from Gollum, and now it's missing. And so there's this remove point that one could see on a graph. It's just a point that is missing, okay? And that, that can happen. The other possibility is perhaps there's what we call a vertical asymptote. Our graph kind of bends towards infinity or negative infinity as it approaches this value, uh, this x-coordinate. So the functions, the functions at the y coordinates absolute value approaches infinity. So it could be positive infinity or negative infinity at this point x equals c. So you get something like this, what we call a vertical asymptote right here. And so this is something we never saw for polynomial functions. So we want to investigate what uh, vertical asymptotes for these rational functions. Now the good news is we can actually detect from the formula what a, where a vertical asymptote is going to be. So when you look at your polynomial here, or this rational function p of q over q, p of x over q of x, right? This should be not reduced. Don't reduce the function. So the not reduced, and I'll, I'll write this down here, that the domain, the domain here is determined by the non, the non reduced formula. And so we'll see some examples of this, the non-reduced fraction. We're so often so used to like simplifying fractions by reducing them that we actually forget that some information can be lost when we reduce it. So if you want to determine the domain of a rational function, do not reduce it. But when you find problems in the domain, when you find a place where the denominator goes to zero, these are what we call a discontinuity, okay? discontinuity because it's no longer continuous. Our graph cannot be drawn with some continuous stroke of our pen. Uh, the, the rational function is going to have some break in it, and there's going to be two types of discontinuities that we get in this situation. So the first option, like we saw on the previous slide, uh, is the idea of a remove point. How do you get a remove point? Well, a remove point is going to occur when you are in, uh, when you do have a reduced fraction. When it's reduced, what you're going to see with a remove point is that uh, the discontinuity disappears. Like in reduced form, Q of X no longer is zero. But on the other hand, you get a vertical asymptote. You get a vertical asymptote, which when it's in reduced form, the denominator is still zero. And so let me explain to you via some examples. Sometimes it's just better to explain things with examples here. So if you want to determine the domain of this rational function right here, r of x equals x squared minus 4 over x plus 4. In terms of the domain, the numerator means nothing. The numerator never affects the domain. The domain is going to come from the denominator, for which if we set that equal to 0 and solve it, we see there's a problem when x equals negative 5. So the domain of our function is going to equal all real numbers x such that x does not equal negative 5. Or if we put this in interval notation, uh, we want 
negative infinity up to negative five, union negative five to infinity. The, the value itself is outside the domain. It's an exception to domain. The numerator is what determines the, the domain, it has nothing to do with the, the denominator, excuse me, determines the domain. The numerator has nothing to do with it. Now, when it comes to, do we have a vertical asymptote or a remove point? Now we have to look at the numerator. How do these things affect each other? Now this polynomial right here, if you were to factor the numerator, you could take out a two, then you get x squared minus two, uh, which could then factor as, well, you get x minus the square root of two and x plus the square root of two. This all sits above x plus five and x plus five. You can see that in this situation, uh, the, the rational function doesn't reduce anymore. So it's in, it's in what we call lowest terms already. And so in lowest terms, you have this x plus five. So this discontinuity occurs in lowest terms. So this x minus five right here is actually indicative of a vertical asymptote on the graph of the function. So you have to reduce the fraction to see whether it's a vertical asymptote or not. Let's look at the next example. For this next example right here, you have x squared minus four in the denominator. So we have to figure out what does x minus four go to zero. Uh, factoring this thing, you're gonna get x minus two, x plus two has a difference of squares. And so your problems are gonna be at x plus or minus two. Uh, in other words, your domain is gonna be everything except for two and negative two. But again, when you look at this fraction, the numerator is a one, the denominator is x squared minus four. This denominator is or, or this fraction is already in lowest terms. So there's no simplification that's necessary. This indicates that both x equals negative two and x equals positive two, these are both vertical asymptotes on the graph. We'll, we'll talk more about exactly what the graph looks like later on, but what we do know already is there's some type of infinite rip on the graph uh, our function is going to kind of, as it gets closer to this asymptote, is going to be bending, right, towards infinity and negative infinity, something like that. That's the behavior we can anticipate as we graph these in the future. Uh, well, let's look at this function right here, x cubed over x squared plus 1. To determine the domain, we just look at the denominator. And we solve the equation x squared plus 1, that equals 0. Well, you could try to factor it or you could add, you know, subtract 1 from both sides, x squared equals negative 1, take the square root, x equals the square root of negative one, that is plus or minus i. Um, when it comes to the domain, right, by the domain convention, we throw out any real numbers that make the quotient be not a real number. For, for graphing these things, uh, we're not actually not gonna allow imaginary numbers here. So in fact, the domain in this situation is going to be all real numbers. There is no real number for which makes the denominator go to zero. So as such, there's gonna be no vertical asymptotes on this thing. Because there is no problem with the domain, there's gonna be no vertical asymptotes. And that's, an, that's a possibility here. Uh, looking at example D, uh, you're actually gonna see a very similar thing, right? This is technically speaking a rational function because the denominator is, uh, yeah, the denominator is just a constant polynomial. When does three equal zero? Well, it doesn't. It's not possible to make three equal zero. Which admittedly, this you could this is just a polynomial, right? One, negative one third x squared plus two thirds. This is a polynomial, but every polynomial is a rational function. But in conclusion, here, the domain is going to be all real numbers, and just like we observed on the previous example, there's going to be no vertical asymptotes on this graph. Polynomials don't have vertical asymptotes. All right. Now let's get to the real heart of the matter here. Let's take the rational function r of x this time to be x squared minus one over x minus one. If we investigate the domain, we only look at the denominator of the original expression, and we see that the domain is gonna be everything, all real numbers x except for one, right? When x is one, that makes the denominator go to zero. But when you factor out the numerator, right, x squared minus one, that's a difference of squares, you get x plus one and x minus one, you then see that the x minus one cancels and in lowest terms, we get the polynomial x plus one. Notice that in this consideration, the x, uh, the x actually could equal one in this situation. There's no division by zero anymore. And so what that means for us is that when it comes to x equals one, this is actually a removed point. Notice how the discontinuity disappears when you simplify the fraction. And so in terms of the graph, we're gonna see a point that's missing, not that infinite rip associated to a vertical asymptote. Uh, let's do one more example to illustrate the difference here. 
And so if we take the rational function x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 4x minus 21, the domain is only affected by the denominator. You never need the numerator for the domain. So when you factor the denominator, you're going to get x plus 7 and x minus 3. So that tells me that the domain is going to be all real numbers, except it's easier just to write the exceptions, negative 7 and 3. So the function's not defined at negative 7 and 3, but what happens to the graph? Well, when you look at the, when you factor the numerator, x squared minus 9, you get x minus 3 and x plus 3. You see the x minus 3's cancel, but the x plus 7 didn't cancel out with anything. So what this tells me is that x equals negative 7 actually coincides with a vertical asymptote because it didn't cancel out like the x minus 3 does. On the other hand, x equals 3, this is going to be a removed point. And so that's the difference. The domain will be anything that makes the original fraction go to zero. That is, those are going to be the things outside the domain. Then, in terms of the graph, will we have a vertical asymptote, this infinite rip, or just a missing point? That depends on how when we cancel things out. If stuff in the denominator cancels out, it was just a remove point. If it doesn't cancel out, then it was, in fact, a vertical asymptote.